voting lab environments in the classroom and how that has benefited us and how we've seen it benefit other other students in the degree. Okay. We, we have a few pre-screen questions that we're going to answer and then at the end we'll take questions from you guys. First question. All right. How do you guys usually care for it? Well, we set up like CTFs like in the classroom that we practice on. Alex usually makes them and then we <laughs> test them out. <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of just gives us an idea of how to how, what we're gonna uh, see when we go into the competitions and if if possible, like sometimes certain competitions will give us like the OSs they're using and we usually build those and we just test them out, see what they're see what they're like and get used to them. I am the least experienced. So my first, my first CTF was my first day of class this semester. So I just walked in. So there's no preparation. Yeah. You're, like, you're doing this now, and I, uh, I did it. There's not as big a learning curve as you would expect. Your Google Foo skills like get pretty good, pretty fast. Yeah. So that's what. Um, honestly, from my first competition was in 2015 at the US Cyber Challenge Camp. I had no idea what I was doing, but that camp actually helped me for the next one, the next competition, that competition helped me for the next one. Once you start going, you start to see patterns, it starts to get easier, you start learning how these things work. So honestly, the best practice for a competition is the competition before it. Like, you, you just gotta jump in and do it. That's why like, when we prepare to go to a competition, we look up that exact competition, and then a year before it, and see what they did and see what it was all about to try and imagine like what the questions are gonna be, what the challenge is, like, and how it was set up. Question. What reservations, if any, did you guys have going to your first competition? How did you overcome? Um, I feel like most people's uh, hesitation is just like, I never did one before, I don't wanna do it, you know, I don't know anything, but you're not gonna learn if you don't try it. You know, that's like Alex said, like the best practice is just to do it, learn from it, learn your mistakes from it, and just, uh, yeah, <laughs> do better in the next one. <laughs> the first in anything is always the scariest, and so you're just like, I don't wanna do this, like, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's good to go, even like, you're expecting people to be better than you because it's your first time going. Of, like, of course, everybody's gonna like kind of know what they're doing, but it's also a great place to like social engineer and like talk to people, network, network. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, your first competition, yeah. you just <laughs> fun. You just need to start. You need to start absorbing the knowledge of all the other people around you. Yeah, and all those smart people that you're scared of, like doing the competition, they had a first time too. You know, they were like a newbie, to, like you would be your first time doing it. So. Yeah, fortunately, in, in my personal experience, my first competition, they were like, okay, you don't know what you're doing. We're going to stick you on the trivia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's good exposure. Like, at the time, I was like, oh, that sucks. But in hindsight, I actually got an opportunity to watch people who really know what they were doing, how to do it. I got to sit there. I got to watch. I got to absorb that knowledge. And the next competition I went to, I was able to go and use those things I learned from my team members. Next question. What are the most important techniques and concepts that you've learned and applied in all the competitions? I haven't been to any actual competitions. I did the one CTF. I'm going to be doing CCDC in the spring semester. I would say like just critical thinking regarding IT is one of the like the biggest things that I've gotten better at just just from doing the one I feel like everything that 
any tool that I had to work with, anything I had to learn to do to answer the questions of the CTF, I've retained that knowledge just from that short experience. Versus like reading a textbook when you're trying to learn about something, it goes in one ear and right out the other, basically. Yeah. Well, except it's reading, so it's like one eye, you know. Yeah, it's definitely, anyway, definitely yeah. Doing, doing it yourself is better than just like reading uh, from a textbook, you know. Just reading from a textbook, you're not you're not doing anything. You're just like, oh, that's how it's done. But then, you know, you sit and try to do it, and you're like implementing like what you're learning. Yeah, you get, you get to use it. Yeah. yeah. For instance, those of you who enjoy Linux, um, you'd be amazed what you can do with the cat and the grep commands. So, la 2016 Net Wars at B sides DC, for example, there was a challenge where we had to find a 40 character flag and an unspecified mandate. Okay, that's a ton of data. How am I supposed to get through all that? You have to apply these simple tools in a creative, in a creative way to get the result that you want. So you can just cat all the mandates, dump them out on the screen, grab them for any 40 characters. Okay? Just yeah, you start picking up language like, right there. Yeah, you just you start <laughs> picking up patterns in the way that similarly like they might be set up, you know. Yeah, it's it's using those simple tools that you've learned and you understand, but applying them to new concepts. Because each time you go to these things there are new challenges that may use the same tools, but you might be using them in a completely different way. Yeah. And you learn that kind of stuff the more you do it. Like the CTF that we did in the classroom, like I had no idea what I was doing. I just had didn't know where to start. But by the time I got, did like net wars and stuff at B sides, like that was like I, I kind of like broke through like a wall that I was like stuck at with like critical thinking and I, I it was uh very fun the fact that I was able to actually do it now. <laughs> and how have you as students benefited from building competition environments? Okay, so we actually built two two CTF environments in the classroom. So we have one based off Mr. Robot, and we have one based off the 2016 election. So I actually have a little bit of content. Those are all the scripted questions that we had. If any of the audience has questions, we'll take those now. I have a question. So, have you ever thought about 
I'm jumping out of the lab experience for CTF and doing more of like a forensics or another type of challenge to CTF to help people learn, like specific tools possibly? Um, we have done a lot of things with Wireshark doing uh, network forensics, okay. things like that. We, we try to incorporate that into the competitions actually. Okay. So you may, part of the competition may be, now that you've completed this, you have done a network capture and here's the PCAP you got. Find out what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, are, what are the typical formats of the competitions and uh, is it Jeopardy style, is it attack defense? Yeah. Um, the ones I've been to, uh, some of them are Jeopardy and some are kind of like, like break into the system. And then I've done uh, CCDC as well, which is like your your you're defending. Defending. Yeah. Yeah. You're defending team. You're not breaking into any systems. You're a bunch of professional red teams. Yes. Yeah. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> These are people who've been doing this for a long time. They know exactly yeah. how to get into your systems, no matter what you do. <laughs> so, um, it's a fantastic experience. The USCC summer camp uh, for this year, it was kind of a Jeopardy style. And I was kind of like the one that was stuck on the trivia. <laughs> um, he did more of the uh, kind of like the attacking part. I actually came back to moderate the CTF while the students were doing it, so I was able to find out if I did anything wrong, how to improve, help them with the challenges. Okay, so then the whole goal of the capstone in place was to create the CTF environment, or was this just a tool that was used? This, this, this was a tool to teach material. What so kind of material was so, so it's advanced security topics. Mm -hmm. So it's really getting into in-depth, um, it's a lot of an operating system. So how to secure either Windows or Linux operating system from the ground up. And that that really applies to building the CTF because as I was saying, those 49 vulnerabilities that you don't want them getting in, you have to completely secure that system and open up one little door. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I, like, I wish. Any which are any relatively patched? If you set up one year and the next year, if you don't have that one more you can wait. Um honestly this is something we've started within the last couple of years. So that hasn't become too relevant yet. Like I, I see what you're getting at. And we set it up last year, two years ago, and they have a specific act on the but there are many more comments from. Yes, no, that's a very valid concern. Um, luckily, the CTF environments are typically typically pretty small. We try to keep them contained within as few machines as possible while doing as much as possible, so that if we need to go back and do maintenance or patching. We're not doing so many systems. So, back to your question: How are they formatted? Um, has anybody here done networks? <laughs> um, both of the competitions we set up have a similar style to networks. We really like that format where we went, and we tried to do the same type of style. So, the, f the seven to five levels. First level, you have a Linux machine, and you're a standard user. The gateway to the second is you get root, you now have a root level um, access. The third level is the, it was two websites. So for the election, it was both candidates had a website. And then four and five is each of the internal networks behind the website. Beyond creating the CTF itself, what resources are you guys creating for, say, the next group of students? So CCDC, for example, how are you helping the next group once you graduate to 
do better and take that team to the next level? How are you preparing? Um, well, we're kind of in that stage right now where we're like creating similar systems to last year's CCDC, and we're kind of um, doing like practice run-throughs. Um, usually, it's him uh, and our teacher uh, attacking like me, like would be going next year. So, like they'll attack a system that I have, and then I'll I'll try to keep them out, and then if and then at the end we'll go through and uh, they'll tell us like how to fix it, or we'll we'll research it, we'll do all that kind of stuff. So, like, all of the information that we gather, we keep on a share drive. So if that information stays on that, and we usually put all the resources that we use on it, so that way it's kept on there for the next year. Knowledge repository. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus, we have like a, um, a cyber club. And so it's not just second year students, first year students join someone out there. So the first year students who don't have a lot of exposure to InfoSec yet, generally, um, they get exposed to more just being in club because we do things like, I don't know if anyone's familiar with like Home Hub. They have like XVWA, Extreme Vulnerable Web App that we have set up so you can practice like SQL injection attacks or um, OS command injection attacks, stuff like that. In addition to like the CTF environments and whatever other resources we have. We, kept, uh, we set up um, wireless access points to hack um, yeah, we, as we, an activity, so. Um, we typically run that CTF in the ethical hacking course and then throughout the rest of the semester, it's a pretty open environment where students can go back in and work on things that maybe they were stuck on the first time they were in. Like, we just went to CyberSeed and they gave us an RSA pub key and was like, okay, find the private key now. And I'm like, <laughs> What? I had I, I had no idea how to do it, and they gave out the answers. But like we found them online, and this this guy just had this script all made up and was like, okay, just put the pub key in here and it'll spit out the private key. I was like, why? So yes. I put that into the share drive in case we ever. I'll see that again. as well. Once we complete something, we kind of go back and see if like people questions we didn't answer. See if someone has the answers to them. We learn from that. We study that. We we run through it. Um, as well, like do it ourselves, like I said, like applying it rather than just reading how they do it. Yeah, it's not only where did I succeed, it's where where did I get stuck, where did I make mistakes, how can I fix that for next time? Yeah. You ever think about like a website CTF? So as to land, like different pages that have different specific tasks set up within that web server, making you force So in, 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 entirely in the web browser? Yeah, entirely, well not entirely, but the CTF, yeah, the web browser and the server for the website, then, basically. Um, that's something I've thought about, but there hasn't really been a need for it since most of it is still very much in-house, and the students will be, and the students are coming in to do it. So it's, we run on our internal network, and the, the students are there to do it. So it's just something I thought about, but it hasn't really become an issue yet. I actually do that at our desk. All right, yeah, that's awesome. Well, when you talk about <laughs> after your presentation, I'd like to yeah, talk about yeah. that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just have to sign. Yeah. yeah. You start with a Linux machine. The, the premise is it's your friend's laptop, he's gone missing. Here's his Linux machine and see what happens. But as you as you get farther in, the web the web servers are still Linux, and then you get into Windows Enterprise environments on the internal networks. So in one there's a domain controller, there's an email server, um, in another there's a it's an MS SQL server. So we are getting sort of both sides of it. Try to spread it out a bit. Keep things interesting. <laughs> Anything else? Alright, 
Thank you guys for coming.